Hello, I'm Kathy, and welcome to the RT Mummy Easy Acrylic Valentine Art Q Tutorial Part 1 You Make My Heart Flutter. So, today we'll be completing this section of the painting, which will be essentially our background. It will be grass and yellow flowers, and um, it's quite easy to do. And tomorrow we'll be moving on to the butterflies and text and we'll be doing some gold accents on there as well so that'll be really fun. First of all we're going to grab our canvas which is a 15 and a half inch square canvas. We have some phthalo blue, cadmium yellow and titanium white and we're just going to mix up a good bit of the actually a tiny bit of the blue and the yellow because we're going to go really soft for a beginning and then get a good bit of the white and plonk that over there and we don't need to over mix things or anything we just want to make sure that we've got a nice light um, but still vibrant green color so plenty of yellow a little bit of blue in that um, initial mix and then just keep going until you're happy with the colour and the tone and we want to be very very light and subtle at this stage. Now I do struggle with a bit of heat at the moment, it is very very hot and my paint is drying out very very quickly. I have damped my canvas, my primed canvas, but I'm still needing to add quite a bit of water to my paint just to keep it mobile on the canvas. But if you aren't experiencing the kind of heat that I am, you may not have to do that. So just feel it. If your brush feels like it, it like it's grabbing on the canvas, you need to get a little bit more moisture on there because we don't want to be dry brushing. We want to fill those little indentations that uh, come with your canvas in the weave of it there. We just want to get a nice light coverage of paint. Now I want to stress to you that this part of the painting and actually the whole painting is very beginner friendly, very easy to do and very stress free so just go with the flow, just plonk that paint down on there and get nice loose big strokes going with your brush. I'm using a, I don't even know what size it is, a reasonable sized angle brush but even a flat brush will be fine. An angle brush will make it slightly easier for the when we start to put the stalks in shortly that you can see on the finished artwork that we have off to the side there that I'll keep there for your reference. Now we really only want to go about halfway up the canvas with this, not, not even halfway. And we want to keep some nice variations in the amounts of blue and yellow and white that we've got going on there but still keep it all nice and soft and subtle. You can add in little bits of blue and little bits of yellow to keep getting those nice variations in colour. Keep the tone nice and soft. Now we're going to start adding a little bit more blue and just keep going with those nice big brush strokes. We don't want to over blend it at this stage, we just want to, actually at any stage, we just want to get some nice texture going on in there of grasses and um, flower leaves and petals and leaves and stalks. <laughs> you can see now that I've turned my brush from using the flat side of the brush to using a, making a thinner line with the angled part of the brush. So where I want to be filling larger spaces and getting that paint nice and into the canvas for the, the basically the undercoat, um, I'm using the flat of the brush and sort of pushing the paint in like that. But when I want to start creating the stems and the stalks and the leaves and petals of um, the greenery, I'm turning my brush to the side so it's more of a, it's like using the, the flat or the, the sharp of a knife. Um, turn it sideways so that you're getting the, the nice sharp edge so that you're making those, those lovely textures in there. So now I've taken just a little bit of the phthalo blue and added it into a pretty large amount of white again. And we're just going to go with a nice sort of most diagonal brush stroke into the sky 
just let me do some vertical there just to get the variation in tone and amounts of white and blue where I want it but mostly we're going to have a bit of a diagonal um, something different from the usual horizontal sky because our view with our butterflies later on will be kind of an angled view as if we're sitting down in the grass and they're sort of on eye level so we're going to have a slightly different view of the clouds there maybe we're laying in the grass and the butterflies are flying kind of almost overhead but, um, it's, it's nice to have a little bit of a different perspective every now and then in your paintings so I'm just going to bring that blue down into the green just make sure that I'm not leaving any white spaces of canvas down there don't get fussy with it, don't worry about it just go straight down and over the top edge of the grasses that you just did and I said it's a very stress free, very easy painting this one so you don't need to worry about anything just nice big brush strokes using the side of the brush the, the flat of the brush this in this area so that you're getting nice good coverage of the larger area you can put down some chunkier bits of white and gently brush them across to make the cloudy effect and try not to over blend when you get nice variations in the sky happening as you feel you need to you can add more white more blue and just getting a nice soft cloudy sky feeling nice big brush strokes changing direction every now and then can help you to get that lovely texture in your painting those clouds happening in the different formations and working down into the greenery so that you're covering up all the white of the canvas and just keep going with that until you've got it all covered if you need to add a little bit of water to your paint to get it to go down into the into the holes of your canvas don't forget you can do that okay um, alternatively you can use a a medium that will make your paint a little bit runnier as well and they also help to lengthen the workable time of your paint so it's up to you how you do it just have fun with it nice big brush strokes lots of texture lots of variation in your marks no fussing stress free relaxing painting make sure you get all the way to your edges I'm a big advocate for painting the sides of your canvases especially if you want to um, hang them without a frame but at this stage we're just going to keep it nice and simple stay on the front and we will tidy up the edges later on like I said don't worry about going over what you've already got there we'll go back and do some lots more on those grasses and flower stems very soon just make sure you get some nice coverage on all that white canvas and play with it, have fun now because I am very hot and very dry here at the moment I'm having to quite work that paint to get it in there and make sure that I've got all my canvas filled up it pays to pay attention to the detail at this stage like I said without fussing or anything but just look at your canvas from a couple of different angles if you've got any light shining on it and just make sure that you've got all those white holes filled in we don't want to be dry brushed on we want to have you have your canvas have some nice coverage that will help us later on when we go to transfer our printable butterflies that you'll find on my Facebook page I'll have those ready there ready there for you to print out and use and just having nice coverage on your canvas is going to help us later to get that transferred onto there really nicely so that we can paint our beautiful butterflies on
I like to mix my paint a lot, especially in backgrounds, um, a lot on the canvas as much as on the palette. And just a nice little thrift idea if you're short on palettes or um, can't afford to buy a proper palette. Um, I really love to use ceramic plates. I'm sorry about the traffic. I really love to use ceramic plates and I just buy those from the thrift store. They wash up beautifully and when they start to get a little bit too old and a little bit too much of the paint's kind of gone into them and they're not all that great anymore, you can grab another one and they, I quite often pick them up for free um, when somebody's having a bit of a cupboard clean out and they say, who wants some new pla old plates? I'm like, yes I will. So. Um, and I just enjoy having the, the ceramic plate for a palette. What do you use for a palette? I'd love to know if you use anything other than a, a, a store-bought palette as such. So now I'm going back into the greens and just bringing that back up into the sky and using that sharp edge of my brush to get some nice textures in there of the grasses and flower stems and leaves. Now remember to change direction slightly with your brush strokes. Get them having a bit of a curve, make some longer than others. Start lower, start higher. Get lots and lots of variation in there. Remembering though that we still want to keep it pretty soft because we don't want the background, um, even though we want it to be really pretty, we don't want it to overpower our lovely butterflies when we put them down so we're keeping it all very nice soft and um, loose you can take some up a lot quite a bit higher if you want to just get lots and lots of variation in there and build in layers nice big strokes nice expressive strokes using the side of your brush very lightly so that you get those lovely thin lines going in all the different grassy directions so curving up to the left and up to the right I find that if I flick, flick lightly upwards and gradually lift off as I go up you get that beautiful pointy at the end stem shape and when you get good at it you can come back down the same way just gradually touching and then getting heavier as you go downwards with your downstroke you can get that lovely pointy grass stem from either direction so I've noticed that doing those longer ones I've lost the, all the definition down the bottom part of the grasses so I'm just going down in there and just adding some more depth, putting some more layers on, getting some more yellow on my brush, getting some more blue on my brush, I'm just getting lots and lots of variation in there. Nice big expressive strokes still, but working on layering your tone and various um, thicknesses and lengths of, of grasses as we see in nature. Nothing in nature is perfect, nothing goes straight up and down or in a perfect line. It's always lots and lots of different colours and um, variations in tone and angle and size. So this is where we get to just have lots of fun with it and, and play. Build up your layers, don't stress if you've got something you don't like, you can just paint over it. It's a beautiful thing about acrylic paint so forgiving in that you can just keep going over it until you've got it how you like it. The only thing I'll stress with this one is just really try not to over blend. So I've just about got this how I want it. I'm going around down the bottom now and just putting some, some shorter bits at the very bottom and adding some in where I might find it's a little bit too blended or it's not got that uh, with the bigger strokes so I've missed those a couple of little areas just going in and popping some little pieces in there 
and because it's all working wet on wet at the moment you, all you need to do is pick up a tiny bit of glue on your brush and pop it on there and it will turn green as your brush moves across the other colours and the same goes for the yellow it'll be brighter but it will still go to a green yellow and um, that way you're just getting lots and lots of different variations in the green and it's all going to be um, very harmoni harmonious and now I'm just going to touch along the bottom edge of the canvas here to just make sure that I haven't got any of that white canvas showing along the bottom edge of my canvas how many times can I say canvas? <laughs> and now we're going to start with our little yellow flowers that are growing on these grass stems so I just have a round brush and I'm just going to alternate between picking up yellow and picking up white because the yellow is um, yellow acrylic paint is very transparent so we're going to have a bit of trouble getting it to look like it's got any kind of depth or uh, roundness to it um, with just the yellow so we're going to put some yellow and some white to, and just dab in a line again make sure that you've got some curves in some bit of a curve at the tip or um, a slight angle and make each and every single one of them different don't fuss with them because nature isn't perfect so we don't want to be perfect otherwise our paintings won't look natural so it's one of my favorite parts about painting nature you can just just relax and go with the flow and if something's a bit crooked or if it's bent over or darker or lighter in patches go out and have, have a look at some actual grass or tree trunks or flowers or anything they're not perfect um, it's a beautiful beautiful thing about nature so we try and paint it that way mm -hmm. capture all those beautiful imperfections the different ways that the light will hit things um, the different tonal variations, that beautiful depth of colour that you get in in natural surrounds and we just want to try and capture that and enjoy it. Now these types of flowers if you're not confident with the brush can also be done very effectively with um, cotton buds or q-tips and you just dab the tip of it into the paint and dab it onto your canvas and you get that lovely little um, chunky spotty flower kind of look with that I'm just using the brush and just doing just nice loose little dibby dabs and putting in lots of flowers wherever I feel like putting them don't be fussy with it enjoy one thing to look out for and make sure that you don't let happen is as I was saying about the beautiful imperfection of nature we certainly don't want to get and it's one thing to be really careful of um, we don't want to get little soldiers all in a row so just be really careful and make sure to watch your placement of your flowers that you're not ending up with them all the same size and all the same distance apart and all the same angle um, make some of them bend over more than others, make some of them curve more than others, make them point in slightly different directions, um, longer, shorter, fatter, skinnier, make them all slightly, they're all individuals. So make sure that you let them have their individuality, go crazy with it, alternate between the white and the yellow and get lots of beautiful variation in there put some in the foreground and in, in the lower parts of the grasses and don't worry if it looks like they're all sort of on top um, as soon as we're happy with the number of flowers that we have down and their size and shape and all that sort of stuff then we're going to go back in with our greens and our um, flat angle brush and we're going to put a, a few more grasses and give them some leaves so I think I'm just about done with these just a few more to go so you enjoy making yours and I'm going to speed this up a little bit 
and we can catch up in just a moment. So don't be afraid to go up into the sky with them a little bit, to have some much closer together and some a bit further apart, and also don't be afraid to get down into the lower foreground parts as well because that's all going to add some lovely depth and texture for you. And we're going for it with a layer of white, a layer of yellow and a little layer of white again. Now remember not to fiddle and fuss too much with it because otherwise you'll lose all the definition in those lovely dotty motions that we've used to create these flowers. So don't over blend, just dab 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 until you're happy. So now I've got my flat brush again and we're just going to do exactly the same thing as we did before and then mix it up very slightly more rich and, and a bit darker. And we're just going to use the, the blade sort of edge of the brush again. And with each of our flowers we're going to come up underneath them and sort of swish off and outward slightly to make a, make a leaf coming off the base of the flower. And make the stems as well. So we want to also make sure that some of those stems if you're putting it behind the flower that you just sort of continue lift your brush off before you hit the one that you're going behind and then continue that stroke upwards to the flower that's sort of currently floating. See here I'm just sort of missing that one in front and just making a, a stem and some leaves for those ones in behind. And This is where we're really going to add some depth and a little bit of realism to it we want to give that feeling of in front and behind and um, the leaves coming off of the base of the flowers and just using that very easy sort of flicking motion to get that leaf shape. So a little bit more pressure at the bottom and then lifting in a flick off and an angle as you, as you come to the base of the flower. Some of these lower ones I'll be going straight over the top of as well so that they're sort of in the grass and a little bit deeper behind and some of them I'll sort of go around them and that'll bring them forward. So just look at where you've placed your flowers and just decide which ones you want to keep in front and which ones you want to leave behind and either go over them or around them likewise. And this is a really fun part because it kind of finishes off this feeling of kind of laying in the paddock out there in the, in the field and you're looking up at all these lovely sprays of yellow and tomorrow we'll have butterflies dancing over our heads so I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial tonight it's a very easy acrylic and um, I'll see you tomorrow while we finish it and if you've enjoyed painting along with me today um, please hit that like subscribe the notification bell and I'll see you tomorrow bye bye for now